I'm super excited to be coming to you today from the Art Center of Coastal Carolina. And today we're gonna to be bringing you another TAP program. The TAP program is our Traveling Art Reach program where we bring amazing artists, amazing art lessons that are integrated with other disciplines right into your house. So today we're gonna to be talking a little bit about science, a lot about art, and introducing you to this groovy guy, Peter Max. I think you're gonna absolutely love Peter Max. So hold tight and we'll get a little bit of information about him. Okay, so everybody has their own brochure full of all of the information that I'm gonna be going through with you today in this video. You're gonna have a cover sheet with some Peter Max artwork. You're gonna have all kinds of great information about Peter Max and who he was and what he does and what he's still doing today, as well as the full art lesson with uh, visuals, with step-by-step -step visuals of what we're gonna do today. So at any time that you feel like you need to stop or pause the video and take a look at the brochure, please do. This is to work together, so you've got this in your hand and you've also got the video to help you out. So let's talk a little bit about Peter Max and his pop art solar systems. Who's with me, right? All right, Peter Max is awesome. Check this out. Here he is working in his studio. Here he is just giving a peace sign and saying hey to everybody. And one of his quotes that he says is, if I didn't choose art, I would have become an astronomer, right? Y'all know what an astronomer is? That's somebody who studies outer space. So it's really fitting that you'll see a lot of the artwork that he does today is about outer space. So check it out. He was born October 19th in 1937, and he lived a really cool life because Peter was actually born in Berlin, Germany. He was raised in Shanghai, China, and Israel, and didn't even move into the United States until he was 16 years old in 1953. So when he moved here, he became really fascinated by the cosmos right? That would be astrology and space and the planets and the stars. How many of you guys are interested in that? It's pretty cool stuff, isn't it? Right? So he now has two passions. He always knew that he was an artist, but now he's an artist and an astronomer in his mind. So he knows that that's what he needs to go to school and study. So he had great mentors in his life. He spoke many languages. He went to school and the next thing you know, he starts sharing his amazing artwork with some really important people. And they're like, you know what, dude? You're onto something. This is great art. You have a graphic design kind of style. I think that you can make really cool posters. So he did. Um, one of the first posters that he did was for a TV show. And then from there, he started doing um, ads, advertisements, um, newspapers, magazines, set designs for movies and plays. He did it all. And the cool thing is, y'all, he's still doing it all. So he says that his life's journey has been an odyssey through time and space, filled with vivid moments, abundant with color, sights, and sounds. And guess where he lives now? What do you think is bright and colorful and full of lots of sights and sounds? New York City. <laughs> you got it, right? If you've never been, I hope you go because it's an amazing place. So when he started making his art, it actually fell underneath the umbrella of what we call pop art. Hmm. Do you think it's called pop art because the colors pop? That could be. But it could also be because he was creating art that is popular in culture. So there's a lot of pop artists in the 60s and the 70s, that's kind of when it became really famous, 50s, 60s, 70s, that were creating art for the today. And if you think about it, what were some iconic things that were happening back then? Well, for the first time ever, the United States of America put a man on the moon. What? So one of his pieces right here is called Apollo 11. And if we take a look at it, we'll notice that this is a really beautiful, colorful astronaut, and the background is a man on the moon. This is one of the posters that he did in 2000 to celebrate Earth Day. And I love Earth Day because if you look at the word Earth, it has a little E, 
a little H, and a big A-R-T in the middle. So art is automatically in and on the earth. So here we have a picture of the earth, and we've got this beautiful pattern of colors around it with all of these really fun kind of pop art cartoons with the solar system and people dancing and flowers and birds, and it's just really a happy, happy piece. And that's the kind of art that he created. He created artwork that was happy. It makes people feel good. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna be a graphic designer, pop artist, and we're gonna design our own poster. And in this poster, we're gonna actually talk a little bit about the solar system. So the first thing I need you to do before we get started is to get all of your supplies together. And you've got a supply list in your packet, so be sure that you have crayons. I love me some crayons. And it's not a bad idea to have some markers because we can paint really well with markers and I'm gonna show you how. Also a pencil, we always, all artists always wanna have a pencil to do their sketching. And then a Sharpie pen, because you'll notice in a lot of um, Peter's works, you'll see that uh, things are outlined in black. It's almost like he's making a coloring book page and then he's coloring it in. So this will be what we'll go over our pencil lines with. And then a ruler and then think tray right here that's full of all kinds of circular items. So I've got a lid from my Starbucks coffee. I've got a little plastic cup right here. I've got a little bit bigger plastic cup. I've got a plastic lid that I took right out of the kitchen count, count cabinet. And I've got a little paper plate. So these, what do you think these might be? Hmm, anybody have any idea? We're gonna do the solar system today. So we might wanna use these to trace when we make our planets, right? You might even wanna have some change in here, a quarter, a nickel, a dime, a penny. That's always a really good thing to trace as well. And then I've got my trusty glue stick here. And the reason I have a glue stick is because this is a really great circle to trace as well. Um, you can do some collaging, which we'll talk about later, but it's not really part of the lesson. So get your supplies together and gathered, and then we'll meet back here in a few minutes. Okay, hi, I hope everybody has all their supplies together. I know I've got mine and I sure am excited. Today I'm going to use a large piece of paper. This is actually a 12 by 18 piece of paper. It's pretty darn big. If you only have a smaller piece, maybe half of that, a 9 by 12, that's going to work just fine too. But I feel like I want to work kind of big today. And so the first thing I needed to do is I need to decide if I want to hold it vertical, up and down, or if I want to hold it horizontal, across, right? Today, I'm going to be inspired by some of Peter's works. So let's take a look at a few of these. Here's one that really shows a wonderful landscape. And when we think about a landscape, we know that there's what's called a horizon line. That's the line that divides the sky and the ground. Okay. Notice that this is held horizontally so that you can really see that horizon line. Then he has a background, which is the sun, some of these stars, and some of these planets. He has a middle ground, which would be that bridge. And then in the foreground, he's got a building, a peace sign, and it looks like that's a part of a guitar, right? So he has a foreground, that's what's in front, a middle ground, and a background, that's what's behind you. Let's take a look at another one of Peter's works right here. This is a really cool one. Now this is sort of like a square shape, but it's a little bit more vertical. And you'll notice he still has a horizon line, even though that horizon line is the foreground of another planet. Then he's looking out from that planet and he sees another planet. He sees some more planets up here. What, what do you think that big yellow thing is right there? That big orb. Yeah, it could be the sun, you're right, yeah. Could also be, I don't know, possibly the moon. And then he's got these little almost spaceship things that are running around there. So he has a very um, a very creative and very fun mind, doesn't he? So that's a great piece too. So what we wanna do today is first of all, like I said, figure out which way we wanna hold the paper. And I believe I'm gonna hold my paper vertical, okay? And then I'm gonna take my ruler and I'm gonna put it sort of down-ish near the bottom because I want a lot more background because what am I advertising today? The solar system. So I'm gonna make my line just like that across. I did it in pencil. Now I'm gonna take my Sharpie and I'm gonna go right over my pencil line 
as much as I can remember to put my Sharpie line over my pencil line, that'll be great, okay? So there you go, there's my horizon line. So now I know that this is gonna be my sky and everything from this line below is gonna be the ground, all right? And then I need to decide what I want my story to tell. Well, I know that we're gonna be talking about the solar system. So, with that in mind, let's go through the planets in order. I wonder how many of you know the planets in order already? I'm gonna give you a little hint as to how I remember them. When I was your age, actually in the fifth grade, my friend David and I had to study the planets in order from the sun out, and I was having a really hard time with it, y'all. I could not remember the names of all the planets in order. And so my friend David's mom said, why don't you play a game where you take the first letter of each planet and make up your own little song. So David and I came up with, are you ready for this? My Violet's ears melted January 6th. Oomph. <laughs> That's right, let's do it again. My violet's ears melted January 6th. Um. So let's think about what those letters might mean. Well, if here's the sun and the first letter that comes out there is my, that would be Mercury, right? So Mercury is the smallest planet, the closest to the sun. And then my violets, so violets is going to be Venus. That's a little bit of a bigger planet. And then from Venus, we go into ears, which would be the amazing planet that we live on that we just talked about with Earth, uh, with art on it, Earth. So now we have Mercury, Venus, we have Earth. So my violet's ears melted would be, let me give you a hint, Mars, you got it. Mars is the next planet out, one of the closest planets to us. And then my violet's ears melted January. So we go outside from Venus and we've got this giant, giant planet called Jupiter. So my violet's ears melted January 6th. The next one, I'll give you a hint. It's the one with the rings around it. That's right, if you said Saturn. So now we have Mercury, we have Venus, we have Earth, we have Mars, we have Jupiter, we have what did I say? Saturn. My violet's ears melted January 6th. And then we have oomph. U-N-P. U is Uranus. N is Neptune. And then the P is a planet that we call Pluto. And some people say, you know what? We, we change our minds. It's not a planet anymore. But some of the old folks like me, we grew up with Pluto being a planet, so I'm gonna keep it in there today. Now, this would be a really fun time for you all to now go to Google or go to the internet and do a little bit of research on all these planets. What do these planets look like? How big are these planets? How many of you guys wanna know a whole lot more about planets and where they are in conjunction with where we are? I think it's fascinating. I feel like Peter Max was onto something when he was completely fascinated with outer space and the cosmos. Okay, so now that we've got that little bit of knowledge, we're gonna figure out how we want to design this. Well, I really, really, really know that I wanna put a sun on here. So I'm gonna take this plate and I'm gonna put it just about right here. This is gonna be my middle ground. And I'm gonna go around the plate so that I make sure that I have a really nice, even half circle to create my sun. Can y'all see my sun there? So if I know the planets are going from the sun out, the next thing I'm gonna to wanna to do is put my planets in here, but I also like the idea of the sun rays. Now, when we look at Peter Max's um, sun rays right here, right, we see that he did, let me pull this off here for you, he did straight lines coming out. I would actually like to, instead of doing straight lines, I would, I'm gonna make that stick with my piece of tape there, friends. I would actually like for my lines to not be straight. I'm, I'm imagining that my lines are gonna have a little bit of curve to them and maybe be a little bit bigger. It's almost like the sun has some fun hair coming out of it. So notice I just did that in pencil and now I'm going to speed it up and I'm going to take my Sharpie and I'm going to outline those pencil lines. Now the rest of my drawing right now, I'm gonna go ahead and just do it 
in Sharpie, but I recommend that you all go ahead and do yours in pencil. So if you need to erase anything that you might not like, that you can go ahead and erase it and then redraw it. Because you know, you can't erase Sharpie. The other thing I want you to think about with your Sharpie too is it can sometimes go through your paper. So it's never a bad idea to have another piece of paper underneath so that you don't get Sharpie marks all over your table at home. Okay, so here's where we are. I've got my son with these funky rays coming out kind of pop art like and now I'm going to begin to do my planets so I know that the first planet this is in the background away from the Sun going out into space the first one is what do we say mercury so I'm gonna do a little circle there now I'm just drawing my circles freehand because I'm old and I've been making art for 50 plus years you might want to go ahead and take the lid of your glue stick or one of your coins to make your first shape. Okay, just to speed things up though, I went ahead and just did it freehand. So that is um, Mercury. And now I'm gonna do my fifth, Venus. So I'm gonna do Venus, which is a pretty groovy planet as well. So there's Venus. And next I'm gonna do Earth. And I'm gonna make Earth nice and big, right smack dab in the middle coming off the sun. So I notice I just used my Starbucks lid for that one. So now I have uh, Mercury, I have Venus, I have Earth, and then my Violet's ears melted. Now I'm gonna do Mars. Now you would think as these are going further out into space, what's gonna happen? Are they gonna get smaller? Do things in the background get smaller? They do. So now I've got Mercury, Venus, Earth, um, my Violet's ears, oh, Mars. See, I always have to do that. I come back to something I learned in fifth grade. Uh, melted January. Jupiter, so Jupiter's gonna be next. Uh, my Violet's ears melted January. And then Saturn. Now Saturn's the groovy one that's got the rings around it. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a ring around that one right now. You might even wanna have some Google pictures of what these uh, planets look like, but we've also put some of these pictures in your packet for you. My Violet's ears melted January 6th, and then we have you, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. And they are way, way, way in the background. They are millions and billions and billions of miles away. So they're so tiny we can barely see them, all right? Now I get to come back in here and I get to be really, creative with what I do. Now I kind of know the outline of what Earth looks like, so I'm going to make that shape of what Earth looks like right here. And then from there, I'm going to go ahead and just be really artistic with this. I might want to put some clouds around here. I might want to put some groovy stuff in the back in the bottom down here, maybe either words explaining what this is or maybe I just want to do some trees and celebrate the things that are, you know, right down here. And and the other thing to think about, here's something interesting. If I'm looking out at Earth, where am I standing right here? Am I standing on an unknown planet that nobody knows about yet? Hmm. Because as the viewer in the foreground, this is what you're looking out at. So perhaps this person who's drawing this right now is an alien. So there's a whole really cool story right there that you can tell, right? So I want you to be really creative with where this can go. I'm gonna come in and add some stars and I can use my ruler to add stars or I can just make my own stars. I might make some itty bitty stars. I might make some really big stars just to kind of come in here and fill in some of this space. So you see how I'm filling in with stars. In the meantime, I wanna think about what I'm gonna write down here to create this poster and make people be interested, all right? So go have fun with that and come back and see me in a few. Hi everybody, I hope you've been having so much fun. I just decided on the bottom of my poster that I was gonna add some words because I want people to know what's going on here. So I wrote in some bubble letter solar system and then I made some funky abstract shapes here that you might find on another planet. Now it's time for us to take this and begin to color it in because as I said earlier, a lot of Peter Max's works look like they start off as coloring book pages and then he goes in and colors them in. He uses paint, but because we're home, we're gonna actually paint with marker and then go over it with a bit of crayon. So 
first thing I want to do is I'm going to take my Sharpie and I'm going to outline a couple of my lines just to make them a little bit thicker. Um, I think that there's something really lovely about color and line harmony. So I'm going to show you something really quick here that's pretty important. This is the elements of art. This is the building blocks of how we make art, okay? We have line, we have shape, we have color, value, form, texture, and space. And we don't always have to use all of these in our artworks. In fact, today, if you think about what we use, we use line, and then when those lines closed, what appeared? Shapes appeared, right? So right now, we're really only focusing on line and shape. In a few minutes, we're gonna come in and we're gonna begin to add color, okay? And then with our crayons, I'm even gonna teach you how to use a little bit of value. The other thing that we are actually paying attention to, which is kind of cool since we're learning about outer space and the solar system, um, is space. Because when you're filling up your paper and thinking about your full composition, you are thinking about your space and how you're using it, okay? so. It's never a bad idea to know the elements of art. So be sure you take a look at that sheet as you're creating your art as well from your packet. All right, so when I talk about line, all of my lines right now are kind of thin. And so I'm just coming in, like I mentioned, and I'm thickening up a few of these lines. I know Peter Max is really good about having what's called line variety, line weight, or line, um, value in his works. So look what just happened to my son just like that by thickening up those lines, right? Kind of groovy. I might want to do that with more lines. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that while you guys are working on thickening up some of your lines and we can meet back here in a few minutes and share what we've done. Go have fun thickening up your lines, folks. Hi everybody, I hope you guys sure had fun thickening up some of your lines. There's something really nice about looking at that line quality and going, wow, this is actually starting to look like a really groovy poster, right? The only thing we need to do now is color it in. So I've got my markers here and I'm gonna start with my sun. And with my sun, I wanna pick a couple of my warm colors, okay? So I'm gonna use an orange and a yellow. I'm gonna start with the orange, and notice with these, with these markers that they have a chisel tip. So part of the tip is long, and the other part is thin. Now, I don't know what kind of marker you're using. Crayola markers have a round tip, so you can get a thin or a thick line. I like the Mr. Sketch markers because I can get a nice thick line there. So I'm gonna come in here in my sun, and I'm just gonna to begin to paint this in, just like so. Notice that I'm not scribbling, I'm using lines to paint. So I'm imagining that this is my paintbrush, and inside my paintbrush is paint, right? Which is actually the marker ink. And I'm gonna turn it this way so you can see it a little bit better, and you'll notice that I am continuing to paint with my marker. So I want you guys to practice that and then we'll meet back up here in a minute when you finish your first area with your painted marker. Go have fun. Hey everybody, how's it going? So here's my sun so far. I'm having fun with my orange. I'm gonna come in now and add a little bit of yellow and maybe even a little bit of pink in some of these strands right here. Now I'm not gonna color the entire thing in with marker. A lot of this space I'm gonna color in with crayon because I wanna see more of an atmosphere, kind of a cloud and a sky feel. And this is gonna be so opaque, which is dark, that it won't really create that illusion that I'm looking for. Where the markers are gonna be nice and dark and opaque. So the next thing I might do is come in here and fill in my stars and my planets and my letters, and then I'll leave the space around it to do my crayon. Okay, so go to work, have fun, be the smartest artist, and I'll catch you back here in a few. I did want to mention, as you'll notice in your packet, that there are a list of what they think the colors of some of these um, planets look like. So Mercury is a grayish color, and Venus is white. It's a big white light, but we're not sure what it looks like when we're close up to it. Earth, we know, is what? 
blue and green. Mars is known as the red planet. Jupiter is like an ochre color planet. It's red and orange and browns and yellows, kind of earth tones and, and warm tones. Saturn is yellow. Uranus is a blue green. Neptune is blue and Pluto is red-ish. And there's information if you do some research about why those planets are those colors. So there's a little bit of information for you to use as you continue on. So go have fun and we'll see you back here in a moment. I'm to play with crayon. And I absolutely love crayons. What I've done guys is I've went ahead and I took out all of the blue crayons here because I'm thinking that in between my sun rays, I'm wanting to add some blue crayon. I've got a green in there. So these are some of the blue crayons right here. And I want you to think about each one of these crayons actually having seven colors in them. That's right. Because of the uh, muscle in your arm, you can create what's called value. So I'm going to take one of these crayons right now. I'm going to push down as hard as I possibly can. Push, 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 push without breaking it. And I'm very slowly going to lighten that up. So by the time I get to the very end, it's gonna be just about white. That's called value in a crayon. Look at how with one crayon, I just made seven colors from my darkest dark blue to a, a little bit lighter, a little bit lighter, a little bit lighter, fading all the way into white. So imagine how cool that's gonna look if we put that into our artwork. So right here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and I'm going to go in between my sun rays and I'm going to push as hard as I can and then slowly begin to lighten that up so I can put some value in the negative space around my objects, around my stars and planets and the sun. See that? Just like so. So have fun with that and we'll see you back here in a moment. I decided that I wanted to add a couple flowers to my piece as well. So I stopped with my crayon and I took out my, um, my trusty Sharpie and you can do this in pencil and I made a couple flowers and leaves here. Now, even though we know that this land might not be earth, I still like the idea of there being flowers because flowers show that there's life, right? That there's there's air and there's soil and there's water and that there's living things on the planet. So I'm gonna do some flowers down there and then guys, I'm just gonna keep on going and I'm gonna fill this in with my marker and my crayon and we're gonna join back in a few and see what it looks like when we're completely finished. So go have fun. Hello, my friends. The sun is actually really bright in the sky right now and it's coming down right on top of me in this video. But I am finished with my artwork. I made my Peter Max inspired poster based on the solar system. So here you can see where I've used marker and warm colors. Here's my earth, which is front and center. I colored in some of my stars and all my planets. And down here at the bottom, I added the solar system with some flowers right here. And I did a little bit of color layering too, where I can layer colors on top of each other. So I'm really excited with the way this works. It might be kind of cool to add one more thing to this too. What if we actually took a piece of paper and wrote down Sun, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune and Pluto, and we named the solar system. That way, this becomes an educational poster that's also really cool to look at. So it's a cool piece of pop art, right? I want to thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. I think that you've made some amazing artwork, and not only that, you've learned about the solar system. How cool is that? So we can thank Peter Max for that. We can thank the Art Center of Coastal Carolina for that, and we can thank the TAP program for that. So remember, you are the smartest artist, so keep creating and keep making your marks, because they matter. Music